Hi everybody, Lori here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to be a part of the Dream Big Release Blog Hop with Simon Says Stamp and I have a very simple, soothing project to share with you using products from the latest Dream Big Release. I'm going to be featuring this fantastic new stencil called Horizon Lines. And if you haven't checked out the Simon Says Stamp Live where Christina Werner features this and showcases some amazing things, I believe she designed it and it's incredible. Okay, so you can create all these different horizons. I'm going to be just featuring the top three lines, which are the waves and hills. I'm going to be using those kind of a unique way to create layered waves on a card. So I have a panel of white cardstock. I'm going to be starting with Tide Pool ink. And I'm just going to be inking up. I'm not doing any gradient blending. Just a nice, smooth, flat dreamy coverage here I'm not going heavy-handed I am building it up but I'm trying not to oversaturate it so again going to be using all positively saturated inks I started with tide pool now I'm lifting off that stencil here you can see how I kind of weaved the the cardstock within the stencil so it's almost like creates your own little mask which makes it easy peasy a lemon squeezy and now I'm going to insert that cardstock back in again but in a different place maybe I rotate the stencil maybe I don't there's a couple different wavy inserts that you can choose from and you just kind of mix and match and move it around and by the way what I'm using here to mask off or just hold it all down this is Simon's stamp masking paper I got this idea from Christina Werner again you need to check out the Simon's stamp live where Heidi goes through all the new products and Christina Warner is the featured guest and she walks through this horizon line stencil in the most beautiful way and I saw her use this big you know pieces of masking paper and I was like genius of course she's a genius by the way this time I used tropic which is the next shade darker after tide pool okay and when I take this out you can see how I should have held up that panel, but you can see they ever so gently overlap. And I've always said this, but the overlap is where the magic is. So now I'm going in with some true blue colors, starting with marine. I love this light blue shade. Again, I'm not doing any gradient. Like most of the time when I blend, I always go darker on one side. But for today's purposes, I wanted to keep it even, Steven, steady Eddie. And look at the overlap between marine and tropic. It's gorgeous. Okay, so now I, I flipped the stencil over. I'm just trying to get different waves that kind of go different ways. Next shade darker is cadet. Another fantastic. I'm telling you the marine, cadet, and royal. They're like the true blue trio of positively saturated inks. And they tickle my fancy. Just saying. Okay, so lifting that up. That cadet brings the party. It really does. And, um, okay, so working my... Now, I thought about stopping right here. Sometimes you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. But when you're having so much fun, it's hard to stop is what it is. And now here's the next shade darker, royal. And it's royal, like in your face, like don't mess around. This blue here is where it's at. And now my when I started this whole thing, I had in my head I was going to do the entire panel rainbow order overlapping wave it up the wazoo but as i got going i realized i think i need a little white space for the you know sometimes white space gives the eyes a place to rest it gives a calming effect for me anyway i feel like when you allow some white space it's just like room to breathe so i thought about stopping right there but i just something in me wanted to add some of those purples Okay, so now I'm going to go through the purple trio, starting with lilac. And if you haven't noticed as well, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp um, blender brushes. But like, for example, here, I'm using the purple one. And I'm going to use that purple, that same purple brush for all three shades. And every time I ink up, I kind of always go off on my scratch paper. And in between each shade, I kind of really rub off so that, you know, and it's nice when you work from light to dark. There's not really too bad of a contamination. But if you're going from a really dark color into a light, you kind of need to 
you know, really work off that ink onto some scratch paper so that you can go back in and get a true light color. You follow me? Here I'm, I'm doing Orchid, which is the next shade darker after Lilac. And I love Orchid. I love these purples because they're, they got a little bit, bit of pink in them. They're warm. They're like a pinky purple. It's right up my alley. Now the last one ringing in just in the corner is Amethyst. And it's the darkest shade. So you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot. It's juicy. It's positively saturated. They blend like butter. Okay, I'm going to take this out and um, just show you. Look it. If you wanted to, you could keep going up that panel, but I'm going to stop. I pulled out the On the Horizon stamp set, and I'm just going to simply stamp that very clean and simple thinking of you. I got it half into the white space, half into the waves. It's like the perfect pocket. I can't tell you how much I love a clean and simple sentiment with a thick border around the edge. I pop this up on a fog card base, add a few little uh, raindrop embellishments. They're like little droplets of water in the midst of the waves of thinking of you. Are you feeling the serene, sublime vibe? I hope you are. Make sure and check out the rest of the Dream Big Release Blog Hop with Simon's Stamp. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you next time.